RSA is a widely used public-private key encryption standard, which is seen in many services that transfer data over the internet. But before we get started, make sure you watch the previous video, in which I explain how the basic concepts of encryption work. Let's just start with a simple example. Alice has a message for it that she wants to send to Bob, so she needs Bob's public key, which in this case actually happens to be two numbers. First, she raises the number 4 to the 7th power, and then calculates that modulo 187, an operation that essentially asks what's the remainder after dividing by 187. This happens to be 115. She sends 115 as a ciphertext to Bob, who, in order to decrypt it, raises 115 to the 23rd power, modulo 187 again. This results in 4, the original message. Let's look at the math behind how this works. First, if encrypt turns the message into ciphertext, and decrypt turns the ciphertext into the message, we can rewrite them into one equation like so. Now, if we expand the functions, we get m raised to some power e mod n, raised again to the power of some number d mod n, which should be equal to the number itself mod n. We can use some shorthand notation to simplify this a bit, taking the modulus out, using a triple equal sign symbol, modular congruence, showing that they're equal after you take both sides mod n. Then to one side, we write mod n in parentheses to show which number the modulus is. This does not mean multiplication to one side of the equation. Raising a number to two powers is the same as raising it to the product, and we can write it like so. Also, since multiplication is commutative, we can either encrypt and decrypt or decrypt and encrypt. So e and d are exchangeable, only difference is which you actually make public. Essentially, what we need now is to find values of e, d, and n that satisfy this equation, which should work for every value of m. First, we can find a special number that you can raise m to that will give you back m, mod n. Then we can just set e times d to be that number and figure out values that work. Since this is encryption we're talking about, this special number should be hard to find from any info we make public but we could easily find during the generation process. A cool math property for mass little theorem gets us some of the way there. It states that for any number m, if you raise it to a power that's a prime number, with a modulus of the same prime, you get back the original number. For example, 4 to the power of 13 mod 13 equals to 4. An alternate expression is a result of dividing both sides by m, and we get m to the power of p minus 1 equals to 1 mod p. The only exception is when m is a multiple of p, because then m multiplied by anything will give 0. Euler's theorem generalizes for mass little theorem. For now, we can simply change p minus 1 to a function called totient p. Let's put in the number we want, n, a number that isn't necessarily prime, but will still work in this generalized form. The exact evaluation of this doesn't matter for now. In fact, it isn't just totient n that works, but every multiple of totient n. This is because when you raise both sides by any number k, 1 to any power is just 1, and we can use basic exponent rules to rewrite k as a multiple of the totient. From the previous example, 4 to the power 12 mod 13 is 1. The power 24 also works, and so does 36. If we multiply both sides by m, we add 1 to the exponent on the left using our basic exponent rules, and the right side just becomes m. This is our special number that will give back m for a number n. Isolating these numbers to their own equation, we define e times d to be equal to this exponent. This is the same as saying e times d is congruent to 1 mod totient n, because modulo is the remainder after division, and k totient n divides cleanly into totient n, with plus 1 as a remainder. So basically, e d is 1 more than a multiple of totient n. Now, to find totient n itself. This is actually decently easy. Let's choose two completely arbitrary values, a and b. We know that m to the power of totient a is 1 mod a. Same goes for b. And also that you can have any multiple of these functions as an exponent, and the result would be the same. So what if we put each other's totient as a multiple? With that, we made it the same number, m to the power of totient a times totient b. For any number m, this is simultaneously 1 more than a multiple of a, and 1 more than a multiple of b. Therefore, this number is also 1 more than a multiple of a and b or 1 mod AB. From this, we can find a general rule, totient AB equals to totient A times totient B. Essentially, to find a totient of any number, you break it into factors and find the totients of those factors. This is very simple in its definition, but it's hard to calculate in practice because factoring numbers are hard. Luckily for us, we could start with the two factors and calculate N and totient N easily. 
we choose two prime numbers, P and Q, and say that N is PQ. Totion N is totion P times totion Q, or P minus one, Q minus one. And that's all we need to know for RSA. Let's run through an example of generating keys. P equals to 11, Q equals to 17, then n is 11 times 17, which equals to 187. Totion n, like I said, is hard to calculate from 187, but because we know its factors, we can do 11 minus 1 times 17 minus 1, in other words, 10 times 16, which is 160. We can check that any number to the 160th mod 187 would be 1. We can say that m to the power of k160 plus 1 is m itself, mod 187. Now we set ed to that, which we can also say ed equals to 1 mod 160. In the normal number line, two numbers are multiplicative inverses if their product is 1, for example 2 and 1 half. If we say that 2 is a, 1 half is a to the power of negative 1. In modular arithmetic, the same logic applies. d is the inverse of e, and we can write it as e to the power of negative 1. Let's make use of the totion again, a totion of the totion. We write e to the power of totion 160 equals to 1 mod 160. If we divide both sides by e, we get e to the power of totion 160 minus 1, which is equal to its inverse mod 160. All we need now is to find a totion and pick any e. However, we run into the problem that calculating the totion 160 is relatively difficult. Imagine that the number is actually thousands of digits long. And we can't start with the factors like we did previously, so we can't actually use this method to find d. But I had to include it because of the fun use of the totion again. Still, it tells us a bit about what type of number e could be. We said that the totion doesn't work when the number is a multiple of the modulus, 160. And since we break totion down into factors, those factors also don't work, essentially meaning that e has to not share any factors with 160. In other words, it is relatively prime. The standard method is to use something called the extended Euclidean algorithm, a modified form of the regular Euclidean algorithm, which finds the greatest common divisor of two numbers, but you tack on another calculation during the process. I don't have time to show the full proof and process here, but the animation shows what you have to do for this specific example. We can choose E equals to 7. And there we have it, e equals to 7, d equals to 23. And you can make e and n public and save d as your private key. And these numbers are what I use for the example at the beginning. If you enjoyed my animated videos, please leave it a like. And I will see you next time.